history. Learn from the worst of men. Learn from the lessons that history has taught those with big enough egos to think that they deserve to possess the world. Now, when we look back to Alexander the Great, we can see a, a prime example of this. Alexander the Great thought that he could basically conquer the known world, that he, that he and he alone had the daemon in order to accomplish this. And it wasn't even about why. And the more you study about Alexander's life, you realize he was, a, he was a warrior, but in the worst sense, because he just wanted to fight for the sake of it. He wanted to push further and further, extend his territory further and further. And, you know, the, the reason that he gave for attacking Persia, for instance, was that um, the predecessors of King Darius uh, had invaded Greece. And, of course, we're going to attack them. Of course, we're going to avenge our ancestors for the, uh, the slight that Persia... Persia supposedly made against Greece. But why extend further than Persia? Why keep on pushing further and further and further, even into India? And there was no reason to push into India. I mean, there were some Indian archers in the Persian armies, but that wasn't even uh, something that he listed as a reason. He just wanted to reach the other sea. He wanted to conquer enough that he would reach a point to where he couldn't conquer anymore. And he never really asked why. He was completely confounded by the, by the sages in India once he, you know, invaded that land. And the reason was is that they didn't want to conquer anything. This is the sages. Uh, they, want, they conquered themselves to the point where they didn't even want to conquer anymore. They conquered the need to conquer. And when we look back on it, Alexander the Great was deprived of his, gr his most desired dream because he, he kept the Iliad right underneath his pillow as he slept. Alexander, Alexander the Great did not die in battle. He died of a fever, of a sickness. And what did he do when he died? They asked, okay, who is your predecessor? Who will take the lands that you've conquered and who will rule them? And, he'll sa and he said, basically, um, the strongest. I'm not sure about the exact words, but basically, the strongest will have it. So he even set up uh, a quarrel between his own generals, between the other leaders in the army, uh, that he knew would happen if he said those words. Whoever could basically push and butcher other people enough in order to gain the, the one spot. And, and you know, as we see it uh, later on, there was no one spot to gain because it just this, this conflict, this battle uh, of, uh, of succession kind of split the Alexander the Great's territories into pieces. But... What we have to realize is that Alexander the Great, when he thought about what controlled him, who he was, he referenced his daemon. Uh, his, you know, this is D-A-E-M-O-N, daemon. And for the Greeks, this was soul. But for Alexander, I think there's a very interesting um, flaw in his thinking. He, but his description of the daemon, his description of soul, basically was all the hallmarks of what the ego is. He confused the soul, he confused the ego with the soul. And that's what led him to these terrible atrocities. Now, when I say atrocities, I don't just mean battles. I mean, he crucified thousands of people, he enslaved thousands of people, and he basically all out executed many prisoners. Uh, he ordered it, and so he's responsible. Now, when he was talking, when, from what we know, when he talked about his daemon, it did seem like he thought it was the soul. But his daemon, he said, basically uh, took hold of him in certain, at certain times, and he couldn't control it. And that when he was most angry, when he was most in a frenzy, a battle frenzy, it was his daemon acting. It was his daemon that took control of him. But soul, true soul, knows no battle frenzy. It knows no anger. It knows no hatred. It knows no rash decision. These are things that are, that are inflicted upon our minds by emotion. And the ego is very close to emotion. They are, they are almost twins. Emotional wrath, emotional either whether it's come from desire or fear or just excitement. Uh, emotion is very much the, uh, the waves upon which the ego rides upon, responding to it. Never, never basically conquering them. The ego is, is forced into a position to where it must respond to emotion. That's why we must conquer the ego. But that basically shows us that he thought the ego was soul. And then he followed his ego to the ends of, ends of the earth. 
crucified many people, enslaved many people, and, you know, he wasn't even interested, interested in ruling them. He was interested in just going as far as he could and owning as much land as he could, ruling as much land as he could. And another figure that is similar to Alexander the Great is Caesar. He wanted to rule Rome. He wanted to be the sole dictator of Rome. So he marched on Rome. Rome. And when he got to Rome and when he, you know, when he crossed the Rubicon and, you know, left his army and went to the Roman Senate by himself, he was executed. But what we have to see about Caesar is that he was so blatantly egotistical that he thought that the other senators wouldn't execute him, that they would accept him as the new dictator. And the dictator that they didn't want. <laughs> they did not want a dictator that basically came to the to the, the throne or or you know basically the presiding seat over everyone else uh, through m through militaristic tactics like marching his his army all the way his legions all the way up to the, basically the Roman gates. Uh, when he crossed the Rubicon, he made war against his own nation. So I would ask that okay, when we look at modern day, when we look at very terrible people. You could say evil people. What do they what do they do that we have seen in the past? Are there lines that are crossed purely for ego, purely for the sake of one's self-worth, purely because of certain desires or fears or a feeling of self-importance and excitement? When somebody inspires you to feel intense emotions and it's either outrage or anger, then you should be careful with that person. So what leaders do we see nowadays that inspire anger, hatred, fear, and, and uh, unwillingness to cooperate with other nations, other, other civilizations, other towns, other cities, what have you? Uh, what kind of leaders do we see nowadays that show that? And by studying the past, we can see what kind of people are in charge today and decide where the road is taking us. Where they are laying down the roads, are they laying, laying down roads that lead into a fire? Are they laying down roads into, that leads into a, a flourishing field of flowers? <laughs> to take this analogy further. Decide for yourself. But always study the past. Always study great men. And now, Alexander the Great and Caesar weren't great in the good sense. But they did quite a bit. And they did a lot of pain. So, when we look at the past... We must learn from all the mistakes, all the egotism, and all the, the vices that these rulers had. And that's what, why we should study history. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you all had you know, a good time watching this video. If you didn't, feel free to shoot it down in the comment section below. If you agree with me, shoot it down in the comment section below. If you like this video at all, hit that thumbs up down there, and I will see all of you in the future. Thank you very much for watching, and you all have a great day.